Well, this is Radio TV Phono Nut, and what you see in front of you are three pocket transistor radios, probably from the 1960s. I picked these up at the Antique Alley yard sale yesterday, and I almost let myself run out of solder. And the same goes for the desoldering braid, so I really can't work on any of the important stuff today. So until I can go to the parts house Monday and get some solder, then waste our time with these three things. The first one is a real tone, probably from the mid-60s. Actually, I've seen these radios in some old catalogs. They sold for, I think, something like six... 695 brand new. Here's a Viscount 14 transistor. Yeah, one might think that would be a super duper performer, but I can tell you it's not going to be. This is either going to be a case where they have the extra transistors wired as diodes, or they might even have transistors soldered to the board that don't even connect to anything. Here's a Drexel AM-FM pocket radio. This one's probably from the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. So let's pop these open and see if we can get any activity out of any one of them. I guess we'll start on the left with the real tone and move our way to the right. Here's the inside of the real tone. And for those that don't know, real tone is actually what sound design started out as. Sometime in the mid to late 60s, the company decided to use the sound design name on its so-called higher-end stuff, and eventually they just dropped the real tone name completely and plastered the sound design name on everything. Now, a lot of people talk bad about sound, sound design, and yes, they did produce some cheap garbage, but I'll have to admit, the earlier stuff from the late 60s and early 70s was better than the later stuff. Okay, we have the power supply connected. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Well, we have static. But we have no reception. I'm not surprised. No correction, we're getting a little reception, but not much. And does it look like these slugs have been turned in? Yeah, it sounds like some somebody might do is tighten the slugs down, thinking that tightening the screws would make it work better. Let's see. Yeah, they were a little off, but not bad. Okay, let's pull it apart and see if we can determine what the problem is. And also take note, these little pocket transistor radios are often a pain in the butt to work on because of their small size and because of the traces. Actually, these traces are solder. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll melt them or they'll run together whenever you attempt to desolder apart. Okay, the first thing on the list of suspects are capacitors. In fact, the ones in here look a little swollen, so I'm just, just going to jump an electrolytic capacitor across each one and see if it makes a difference. You know, this electrolytic is bad. Notice when I jump it, the audio gets a little louder, so let's try to change that. Well, that helps some, but we still have a long ways to go. All we can get is this one station, so we'll jump more capacitors. Well, that's weird. I just jumped this capacitor out, and the volume blasted up, and when I removed the capacitor, the volume still stayed up. So maybe what happened when I jumped that new capacitor across the old one, something might have micro-arced 
Yeah, that's my own tom inside of the old capacitor and bridged an open connection. And now the old capacitor is working again, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it just to be on the safe side. Okay. I think that'll about take care of that one. Back to part in democracy. Okay, there we go. This is a special alert for Americans who are behind on their... T I used to stay out all night long. I'm provider of small business loans. Yeah, that's not bad for what it is. Okay, let's button this one up and move to the 14 transistor deluxe model. And here's the inside of the 14 transistor set. Notice all these clumps of transistors right here in a, together. And you can bet they're either wired in parallel, used as diodes, or not even connected to anything. Here's one big metal can transistor here, but the rest of them are these black garbage dome top transistors. Let's let's connect nine volts and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Yep, heard a little static when I first turned it on. Hearing a little buzz in the speaker. Nothing as I tune across the dial. No surprise there. All right, let's pull it apart and see what we've got. And it appears that these extra transistors are simply simply wired in parallel with one another. So basically, they're doing absolutely no good as far as circuit performance. In fact, sometime in the 60s, the Federal Trade Commission jumped in and. Said no, no, no. You can no longer, uh, you can no longer do that. Any transistors in the uh, transistor count must actually be active components. They can't be wired as diodes. They can't be wired in parallel with an active transistor. They can't be wired simply on the circuit board with no electrical connection. Okay, with that said, we're going to do the same thing to this one as we did the last one. We're going to jump capacitors and see which one makes a difference. Although in this set, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one of these crappy black transistors is the problem. Okay, after it's been on a minute, I'm getting some very weak, distorted audio on our Christian station. And the longer it stays on, the better it gets. So that's almost a surefire sign that it's old capacitors that have dried out and they are they are reforming themselves the longer the set stays on. Okay, here's the bad cap. Yep, that one's bad. Okay, after replacing the speaker coupling capacitor, put it all back together, turned it on, and it was dead as a doornail. So I opened it back up, and where this red wire solders on from the speaker, this had broken completely and loose, so I just took a piece of lead from a capacitor and just bridged the cross there. And it's working now. You know, I've never... No, no rest, 
sprayed the volume control with cleaner because you know, it was I, dirty, but you know, volume control is about shot because we're at minimum setting and that's as low as it gets. But I'm not going to worry about it. It's not like I'm going to be using this set on a regular basis. So let's put it back together and hope no other surprises come up. There we go. Okay, well that takes care of number two. Now let's hope number three here will work out according to plan. Okay, here's the AM FM set. Let's see what it does. Now we have a scratchy volume control. Like this one's trying to work. Tell you what, let's do. Let's clean the volume control and the band switch, and we may not have to do anything else to this one. Here's the inside of this set. As you can see, it's very packed up, and it'll suit me just fine if all I have to do is clean the volume control and spray the band switch with control cleaner because. Wouldn't want to try to take this mess apart and fix it. You know who you can say thanks to, right? We are on I mean, AM. You know, Phil, you've been places and you... things just stay clipped on here. pretty good on these. Got all three of them working to some degree. Now we'll check the capacitors. This is a CE brand capacitor. 33 microfarad. This is the speaker coupling cap out of the Viscount and as you can see it's reading 2.2 microfarad so for all intents and purposes it's dried out. Of course we knew that from our previous troubleshooting. And now the capacitor is out of the real tone. This is a 4.7, or should I say 5 microfarad, reading 13 microfarad, so it's on the high side. Here's another 5 microfarad. I think this is the one that was actually causing the problem. It's, it's reading 4.1. It started out at about 3.8 when I 
first connected the tester and then it climbed up a little bit. I think that's the one that healed itself whenever I jumped another electrolytic across it. And last here's a 50 microfarad clocking in it. And we'll just say 85 microfarad. So there we go. Three transistor pocket radios saved, repaired, sets that would have otherwise likely gone in the trash. So I hope you got something out of this, and we'll do something else again later when I get some solder. So I can repair some of the stuff that really matters.